Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. We're going to walk through an SQL trace file. And I want to explain a little bit about, uh, I call it dynamic baselining, which means I have no baseline to start with, so I'm going to make it up as I go along, and how we can identify the source of latency. So this trace file was taken from the client's perspective, and he's talking to a database server. And I'm going to walk you through everything from the three-way handshake through the application calls. First thing we need to do is set up the screen properly. And what I mean by that is by default you have that three pane display. So I go to view, I uncheck packet details, and I uncheck packet bytes. The reason why you do this is so you can concentrate on one thing at one time. You don't need the distractions. And the second thing is the time. Since this has a display filter, I need to change the time to the delta time. So view, time display format, second since previously displayed and this is key displayed not captured displayed packet the hotkey for that is control alt and six so there's our three-way handshake you can see the client talking to the server and he's talking on port 1433 which is very common and there's my syn packet synchronized three-way handshake hello extend your hand however you want to think of it and the client sends that to the server i see the ack come back from the server and he sends a syn as well and because these two numbers are the same, obviously these port numbers, these are called um, ephemeral or temporary port numbers. You'll see it mentioned dif different ways in different literature. It's a temporary number, right? So these two are the same, which means it is the same conversation. And I see 33 milliseconds. So that's my three-way handshake. It doesn't mean it's always going to be 33, but right now it is. So that's what we're going to go with. So 33 is a line in the sand for me to go across the network to the server and back to the client. If you take a look down here, you'll see another 34 from the server and a 35, and then the numbers start to come up, right? 36. So now we get an idea that we're talking mid 30s for kind of an average response time so far at this point in time. And that's important to figure out because later on, if you see a bigger number than 30, like 300, 100, 500, then you'll know that's abnormal. So, so far, we're talking 30s for the, for the actual response time. Over here, we can actually see there are uh, messages going back, right? So there's a pre-login message from the client, and obviously there's a response from the server, again, 34. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to page down. And you can see the 35, 34, 33, things are good, right? The other thing to pay attention to is, are there any retransmissions? Are there any errors? That sort of thing. And so far, no. This is a very typical... SQL um, setup, so to speak, because there's a lot of little packets going back and forth, uh, you know, gathering database information, your credentials, all that kind of jazz, and it needs to figure things out before it starts doing some real work. And you can tell they are relatively small packets, and they are ping-ponging back and forth. It's called a ping-pong, or we also call it a positive acknowledgement with retransmission, and that just means that I'm sending something and I'm getting one thing back. I'm sending something and getting one thing back. So it doesn't matter what TCP thinks. This is the way the application is driving right now. Page down, we see the 30s coming up again. We don't see any errors. We don't see any retransmissions. And I'm just going to scroll down just a little bit here because I want to pull this up to the center. And you can see the client sends a server an SQL command. Now this is different, right? So the client sends it to the server. The server comes back to the client with a response. Now it's 102 milliseconds later. Now here's the key though, this is not a response. If you come all the way to the end, look at the end here, length equals zero. That means there's no data. That means this is a TCP acknowledgement. So the way to properly read this is the client sent the server the command, in this case an SQL batch, then the server sends back a TCP acknowledgement. Why? Because the server knows it's going to take him possibly some time and he wants to make sure the client doesn't retransmit. So this 102 is not the data response time. It's just an acknowledgement. And some application performance tools that retrace files will misinterpret this. So it's important for you to know how to do this longhand. So 102, ACK. And then look at that. The server comes back another 85 milliseconds later. And this time we have the response. So the response time is really 102 plus 85 is 187 milliseconds. So it's almost 200. That's a far cry from the 30s that we were seeing a moment ago. So now we know what that pattern looks like, and now we try to see if it happens again. And sure enough, there's an SQL batch file. There's yet another 
85 millisecond acknowledgement, which is pretty well, I'm going to say, similar to this 85, but you got an ACK, and then you get this actual data response. So the total is 85 plus 4, which is 89. So this one was 89 milliseconds. So now we can see that in this case, we did have some response times greater than the 30 average that we had, and they were both from the server side of it. So you want to go through this exercise, look for the big response times, find out what side they're on. Please pay attention from where you captured the data from. Since we're on the client side and these two examples were pointing towards the server, I would literally say it that way. It's pointing towards the server. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a server. It could be the WAN, it could be the firewall, it could be the router, it could be whatever, but it's not here. It's the other way. If we were capturing from the server and we saw this, then you could be a little more definitive with your conclusion. So here we go, 34, 34, and then we see the client send the server something, and 63 milliseconds later we get some data that's slightly bigger. And we'll just kind of scroll down a little bit, and we can see the client sends the server another SQL batch. We get an acknowledgement, 92 milliseconds later. It's an ACK because the length is zero. And then 13 seconds later, this is from the server. So again, now we're pointing at the server again. So if you want to keep like a little scorecard in your head, you know, server check, server check, server check, and that kind of thing. So far, the client hasn't had any uh, latency that we could see. But after the 13 second delay, though, you can see the data comes flying down pretty quick. So that's just a, a quick overview on how to start looking at these trace files. So again, just a little review. Please make sure you pay attention where you capture from. In this case, it's from the client's perspective. Please make sure you have a proper display filter. And the best one to have is a conversation, which is a combination of two IP addresses and two port numbers, OK? And then the last thing is to pay attention to these uh, delta times. Just make sure your time setup is set up accordingly. There you go. So I hope that helps. Have a good day. Bye for now.